Mac OS 11.0 Big Sur is possibly one of the largest updates to the Mac operating system since the original Mac OS X launched in 2001. Big Sur brought many changes to the Mac, including a more modern and consistent design, improved default apps, and the new control center, along with many others. But how do all these updates affect performance and battery life? To test this, I'll compare boot up speed, program opening times, Geekbench scores, Final Cut Pro export times, and finally, battery life across the two versions of Mac OS. So, without further ado, let's get into the tests. Starting off with the boot speed test. As with every test in this video, Mac OS Catalina is on the left, and Mac OS Big Sur is on the right. As for the computer I'm using, this is a base model early 2015 12-inch MacBook. It's got an Intel Core M5Y31 CPU, Intel HD Graphics 5300, 8GB of DDR3 RAM, and a 256GB SSD. Since it's an older Mac, the test results may not be completely representative of a test with newer Macs, but I chose to use it in this video as it allows for any performance differences between the two operating systems to be better accentuated. After completing the boot up test several times, I found that Catalina consistently took around 52 and a half seconds to boot, while quite surprisingly, Big Sur took about 20 to 24 percent longer, booting up in a minute and three to a minute and five seconds. This is a clear win for Catalina. Now for the program opening test. Here we'll be testing Adobe Photoshop 2020 and seeing how long it takes to open a .psd file in Photoshop one minute after boot up. As you can see, Catalina once again outperforms Big Sur, and this time by almost twofold. Catalina took about 14 seconds to load Photoshop, while Big Sur took 25 to 30 seconds to accomplish the same task. I tried to keep as many variables as I could constant between the two tests as well, so the results should be accurate. Another win for Catalina. How about Geekbench 5? Can Big Sur redeem itself here? Well, there's actually no clear winner. On Catalina, the MacBook achieves a single core score of 592, and a multi-core score of 1115, but on Big Sur, some runs were better than this, and others were worse. The single core score ranged from 570 to 593 on Big Sur, and the multi-core score ranged from 1085 to 1123. This is a definite draw. Now, let's see how long it takes both OS's to export a video in Final Cut Pro. Some of my recent videos have actually been edited with Final Cut on this MacBook, including one I recently uploaded testing whether OS Tonal Capitan is still usable today. It's pretty interesting. I'll link it in the card at the top right. Now, back to the test. Catalina finishes the export in 8 minutes and 16 seconds, while Big Sur takes about 11% longer to export the same video, finishing in 9 minutes and 12 seconds. Catalina wins again. Both operating systems are running the same version of Final Cut Pro 10, version 10.4.8. Now for the moment most everyone has been waiting for. How does Big Sur fare in terms of battery life when compared to Catalina? For this test, on both versions of macOS, my obsolescence playlist will play until the computer runs out of battery. The screens will stay at 75% brightness, and the audio will be set to 0%. So, sit back and enjoy the test. Precise battery information will be displayed on the coconut battery window.
As you can see, the MacBook running Big Sur already runs out of battery at around 3 hours and 33 minutes into the test, as Big Sur uses slightly more power when compared to Catalina. It takes until about 4 hours into the test for the same MacBook running Catalina to run out of charge, meaning that Catalina lasts about 13% longer than Big Sur on the same device, and that a full charge in Big Sur is, in this case, mathematically equivalent to an 89% charge in Catalina. Keep in mind, the battery wear is quite similar between these tests, as the cycle count only differs by around 1. But does that mean you shouldn't upgrade? Not necessarily. If you have a newer and or faster Mac, the performance difference will most likely be much smaller. Even in this case, the performance loss doesn't impede overall usability all that much. I really enjoy using Big Sur, even on this MacBook. In fact, I edited this whole video on this MacBook, on Big Sur. Sure, some tasks might be a bit slower to complete, but you'll get a lot in return. You'll be able to take advantage of many redesigned and more functional apps, such as the new Safari, Messages and Maps apps, optimized battery charging to improve battery longevity, AirPods automatic device switching, longer support for apps and patches in the future, and of course, a modern design that redefines the Mac experience for the next few years. Despite the fact that Catalina will most likely be supported until late 2022, I personally see Big Sur as a worthwhile upgrade, but you'll ultimately have to decide, do you want what seems to be better performance or more modern and capable operating system? If you want to see other macOS related videos or operating system comparison videos like this one, check out my channel. You'll surely find something you'd like. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Like this video if it helped you, and subscribe for more tech videos like this. Also, don't forget to check out my automotive channel, Tech Simpler Garage. See you all in the next video.